We'll quickly go, I'm just gonna quickly kind of give you, we've been talking a lot about these pieces and waving hands. I'm gonna give a kind of a more concrete sense of, of some of the detail of how we build the system, how it's architectured. Um, the central piece would be the AppFormix controller, okay? That's at the top level. This is our centrally managed, uh, comp the component that centrally manages all the rest of the software that we provide. Um, it's, all of our components communicate with REST APIs. Um, and we, like I said, we expose those to our customers. Um, the AppFormix is sort of the, the centerpiece that when you install, uh, our software, we, we first install the controller on either a bare metal host or a virtual machine, depending on the customer environment and the, the size and the load they're expecting. And from there, uh, we discover, we talk to uh, Keystone and Nova, and uh, the reason we talk to Keystone is so that we don't have to do identity management. We use the same identities as you're already using in your OpenStack infrastructure. Um, and we talk to Nova to find out well, who are all the compute hosts, who are all the, what are all the instances. Um, once we find out those hosts, we actually deploy the agent. And um, then we have a series of pieces that are using our APIs to provide um, configuration. For instance, the OpenStack adapter is what is actually doing the talking to Nova and Neutron and Keystone and taking that discovered information and configuring that form controller through the REST APIs. Um, similarly, if this were a Kubernetes diagram or a Docker kind of environment, we would be having a different adapter, very similar, but that's n knowledgeable about the details of Kubernetes and can map from that to our data model in the uh, Formix system. So and for customers, the OpenStack adapter, for customers who, I would imagine large scale customers, this may be the limit of my knowledge of OpenStack. Are they actually using Neutron or some other, the, your OpenStack adapter plug into something other than Neutron at the network layer, or are customers actually using Neutron? Our customers are using Neutron. Neutron is okay. Yeah, yeah. In fact, all of our customers right now are using Neutron. I haven't, we haven't been in a quantum Nova, Nova network environment yet. Okay. Um, and so the, these components here are sort of on the right side. We, we kind of group them all as part of our controller. They all right now run um, on the same box for, for small installations. We have um, a, a tier, a, a, an HA proxy kind of approach to scale that out if it's a really large system. These are each uh, containers. So the AppFormers controller, the OpenStack adapter, our analytics, uh, the, da the database, and the dashboard, they are all implemented as Docker containers, that's how we actually ship it to the customer, so that we can scale these up in a microservices architecture of our own, just to run our software. And then again, they're listening on the message bus, so our dashboard is getting data off the message bus uh, in the same way that our analytics engine is. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way that the user, if they want to write custom tooling, can listen to those events. So what's the impact then if I lose the database? Say no again. SQL, what's the impact if I lose the NoSQL database? What happens? So, uh, the, so we have two, we maintain two separate databases. One is for our config, configuration data, and okay. one is for historical, like for the reporting, for all that okay. historical data that we want to keep. So if you lose historical data, I mean, it's a loss of data that you will collect more in the future. Um, if you lose our configuration, um, we would have to be, re, we would have to rerun discovery but you would lose like user configuration if they've configured an alarm or a widget. And um, we do, like I said, allow for a clustered approach so we can do an HA based thing so that you have redundancy. Um, we can have that, that NoSQL database we're using Mongo right now most commonly. You could have that be you know, a multi-node Mongo installation that if one goes down, you still have your data. You said you would lose user configuration. I mean, if you had a single Mongo node, and that did go down, you would, you would lose that user data if it wasn't you know, locked on some disk volume or something that you could retrieve later. Back it up, man. Yeah. That's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys came out of stealth mode, what, middle of this last summer, pretty much? Yeah. June? June. Was that, that was, uh, <laughs> so Kilo was the release then for OpenStack, is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so recent release just came out, right? Liberty. Uh, yeah. Do you guys support Liberty? Yeah, we're working on that right now. I mean, we, we have installations with Juno and Kilo, um, and we're working on testing it with Liberty. What's the timeline that you guys see that's been out since like middle of October, right? What's your timeline to support that next release cycle as OpenStack revs? So, can I get that? Yeah. So this was like, while we were building our software, this was one of the key things for us. 
So any OpenStack API that we use, mm -hmm. uh, we made sure it's backward compatible sure. and will be the same across all releases. So if you have a Liberty cluster right now, we can install on it. Okay. Right? We do not use any API from OpenStack that's not backward compatible. We have made no changes to OpenStack at all. Okay. So it sounds like you're doing obviously quite a lot of ongoing development work. How do I update my existing AppFormix infrastructure? So have one? No, I don't have one, but hey, I might have one after today. It's all free, isn't it? So <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> You just have to work until you pay off the license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our deployment is, um, we use an automated deployment that's based around Ansible right now. And uh, the, the database is preserved. So when we redeploy our containers, they're connecting to that same database. They're using that data, you know, and assuming there's no schema change that we haven't made in that release, if there is, we need to do an update. Um, and if and we would also be pushing out the agents to the host automatically again we use ansible for that underneath the hood yep. um and so th these containers we, you know you can basically tear one down and bring one up and because it's talking to this mongo service that mongo service stays running so how how long would you say it would take on average for that to happen then on a typical host Oh, it's quick. It's very cool. We'll show you just the show installation. You. In fact, do I mean, why don't we just okay, do the installation, the installation right now and show yeah. you like what it looks like. Okay, cool. We are um, taking time. Yeah, let's go. We're going to do a live demo right now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, let's do this. The UI you were seeing was live. I mean, this is all live here, but... Uh, well, okay, so just, uh, just, just to give it a little more context, the UI that Tra Travis showed you is a, is a production cluster that runs on Mirantis Express, which okay. is like a cloud offering that Mirantis offers. We don't own those nodes. It's, and Mirantis kind of owns that nodes and enables the OpenStack service on those nodes. We just layer our software on top. We can, that, that's the demo we were showing you. It's a Mirantis Express cluster in, in the wild and, and that's where it's running. <laughs> so you guys, you guys support Neutron, right? Um, Neutron has a lot of plugins, obviously, right? For, for you know, Brocade, Cisco, UCS, Nexus 1000, whatever like that. You're pulling stats from that and you can pull like VXLAN stats as well. So assuming a VXLAN fabric, how far out are you able to pull stats from? Are you just getting Neutron what's reported in from the fabric, or are you, gonna, are you able to extend out further and grab that data as well? So our network analytics are actually at the edge. Okay. And we do that for in particular reason because we don't want to be seeing the encapsulated data. Because okay. then we can't do, we, we're going to get to that near the end, but uh, we actually do some deep analytics of network traffic. And we actually want to see what's in the packets so that we can do application level like analysis of HTTP or TCP. So you're grabbing the VTAP basically right there. And, and we're, actually, we're actually giving you a visibility into the network from the layer between the hardware, NIC, and the virtual NIC in the, in the, in the virtual machine. Okay. So we're looking in between that position. And so we see the decapsulated packets and uh, that way we can kind of give you like an end-to-end -end view of what's going on. And that then allow me to do a inventory or mapping basically of what virtual machines are talking to what other virtual machines, over what ports, I can actually say, actually, this VM has a dependency on this VM over here. I want to keep these guys together and greet them on the same host so it's more effective essentially. Is that something I can do today? That, that, is, that, something, that is something that you will be able to do. Okay, roadmap, um, yeah? Yeah, that's on the roadmap. So. And is that the same, um, m maybe it's the same, but uh, what I would like to see, for example, is when uh, I run a query against a database that you can tell me, okay, normally this is like this fast and now it's uh, five seconds slower because of this of this component. Yes, so one metric that we track with our network analytics module is that um, the application response time yeah. that we measure based on looking at, for instance, HTTP protocol and seeing when the request started and when the first byte of the response came back. So we can actually say, okay, without even modifying your application or your database, mm -hmm. if it's using HTTP as its protocol, then we can give you application response time and you can then generate alerts based on you know, trends or So threshold. you could see that uh, on, on node one, the web server is slow and that is, because, uh, that is why the query is yes. on, on node two is slow. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. 
Um, so uh, here I'm going to go through what it looks like to install our software. So we actually worked on this uh, installation experience after going out to customers the first few times. And um, you know we started out with some scripts and a config file and a readme. And you know after I think the third or fourth installation, we saw you know a few of the folks with the checkbook kind of look at that and walk out of the room while we were installing. And you know that's not, the ex that's not what you want to happen when you're demoing to a customer. So what we did is retooled this to be much more streamlined, much simpler, and um, I hope you'll agree. <laughs> um, what I'd start with is we collect a few basic pieces of configuration information about your OpenStack cluster. Um, so this is the an Ubuntu uh, uh, OpenStack distribution. We have um, you know a few hypervisors. I think well, of course I got to log in. Admin of course. Yeah, twice. I don't know why. That's a Horizon fun thing. As I was saying, so there's uh, two hypervisors, uh, two compute nodes in this OpenStack cluster. And um, you know, there's a f there's a handful of instances, I believe. Um, it looks like there's three in this project, and there's several other projects uh, in in the system. So what we're going to first we do is say, okay, what is the host name of the OpenStack controller where Nova is running? What's the administrator's uh, project? It's also some people call it tenant, and then the Keystone machine, and then the credentials for the administrator. Next, we just need to know where um, the AppFormix controller has been installed, because this dashboard could be served up. It doesn't have to be served up from the controller itself. And now what's happened is our controller and our OpenStack adapter have gone out to Nova and Keystone. They've logged in, and they've found these are the hosts that are in this uh, OpenStack installation. And we can select a subset of hosts that which we want to deploy our agent to. Um, this is useful for some customers that have a large cloud and they just want to try it out, like maybe one host or two hosts at a time. Um, and you can add more later after you've done the initial installation. In this case, I'm just going to select all of them. And you can review the data, and then we can start the process of discovery. So now what's happening is we're continuing to go talk to Nova um, and ask more information about what's in this OpenStack cluster. We found five projects. We found two hosts, three instances, and five host aggregates. And then finally, we can log in. You missed a little. Yeah, that looked complicated. Is that? <laughs> no, I was saying that that wasn't complicated at all. Right. So we've like we've worked on that and really tried to make it smooth. But under the hood, what's going on is that uh, once we've found those hosts, we're actually using Ansible, and Ansible has this notion of dynamic inventory that you can tell it. This is you can give it a script and say uh, these are the hosts that are in my environment. And we're using Ansible to go and push out that software, the uh, agent that runs on each uh, computer. So this has app. then installed the agent. It's not just gathering the, app, That's uh, right. the OpenStack stuff. It's gone off and done the agents as well. Right. Oh, so this, this is a connector. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to X, and I think this is relevant to the same question. Since this is a solution that uses OpenStack APIs, could I use this with something like a Platform 9? which has the OpenStack instances managed in the cloud, well, the OpenStack management hosted in cloud, but my compute nodes are there, and I can still, and that APIs are exposed. Yeah. There isn't a reason why it shouldn't work. Right. If you, if, you know the, if you know the address of your Nova controller and your Keystone controller, and that's given to you as a user of Platform 9, then you could provide that information here. It will go talk to it. It doesn't, our software doesn't care, doesn't know how far or close that those systems are. And I'm not, and it's just a connector, so I'm not actually running a new process on Nothing. those servers. No. It's no. just no. collecting no. data. Right. Absolutely. Right. Our, 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 all the, our controller component runs on an independent uh, machine. And so I logged in with those Keystone credentials, the same that I use for Horizon. And you can see that this is what we was showing. The summary just showed us that it discovered. You can see the hosts. You can see the instances. Um, and then just to kind of show you uh, the capability of our agent, uh, kind of beyond OpenStack, what we're going to show you is that um, you can actually go and add a host in the public cloud. Like, we can deploy our agent on another server. And uh, my colleague Harshit is going to show us uh, an Azure system 
where there's Olive Azure. Olive Azure. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been. I actually built some project. of this. So. <laughs> So it's a Linux host running on Azure, and he's going to basically add that into the set of hosts that we want to monitor. How does that talk back, though, to your on-premises solution? What, I suppose the question I'm asking is, what security is wrapped around that agent talking from Azure back to my on-premises? Yeah, in this case, it's a secure tunnel. It's already okay. been set up. We didn't do it. So, it's a secure tunnel. It's okay. a secure tunnel. Think of it as the hybrid cloud scenario. You've yep. set up your connectivity, and it looks like one big cloud. Yeah. And that's over four four three, is it, or what ports it talk over? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 cool. 